He's basically saying I was three degrees of separation from the head of the Israeli state, making it seem like I had all this undue power and influence when in reality I was an 18 year old student just trying to get my degree. Anti-Semitism in the UK isn't a new phenomenon. From the origins of the blood libel in the 12th century to the constant delegitimization of Israel today, anti-Semitism has been prevalent in British society for centuries. Today, over 200,000 Jews reside in the United Kingdom. In 2016, Britain adopted the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance's working definition of anti-Semitism, which states, Anti-Semitism is a certain perception of Jews which may be expressed as hatred towards Jews. Rhetorical and physical manifestations of anti-Semitism are directed towards Jewish or non-Jewish individuals and or their property towards Jewish community institutions and religious facilities. However, anti-Semitism still continues to be on the rise. The Community Security Trust, an organization devoted to the safety and representation of Jews in Britain reported a 34% increase in anti-Semitic incidents from 2020 to 2021. At UK universities, Jewish students make up about 0.5% of the student population of Britain. In 2020, the CST reported that from 2018 to 2020, the number of anti-Semitic incidents on campus were at an all-time high. This was then debated at the House of Lords in January of 2021, with members urging universities to adopt the IHRA definition of anti-Semitism and implement harsher measures to combat anti-Semitism on campus. As of now, 102 UK universities have adopted the IHRA definition. As a Jewish student at a UK university, I wanted to investigate a few incidents of anti-Semitism on campus in the past year. What measures were taken by universities to combat these incidents? Are these institutions really adhering to their adopted IHRA definition? To learn this and more, I spoke to a few Jewish students and graduates of some of the UK's top universities who have been affected by the growing anti-Semitism on their campus. Jacob, the student news editor for Cambridge University's student newspaper Varsity, was targeted online by a Cambridge professor for an article he wrote. We released an article on two professors having a spat over Twitter um, at Cambridge. One of them said the other's use of eloquent was, was sort of dismissing writers of colour. We reported on that. We reported on the other guy's response to that, saying, I'm, you know, that's, it's not a racist term. Uh, it's, an ins it's insulting that she said that. So we reported on that. Article goes up. She does this whole thread on Twitter saying, I've been the victim of, a, of an invented attack. I've been the victim of an invented attack by the, stu by the student newspaper because of the work of one news editor, me, because I oppose the IHRA definition of anti-Semitism. And he is a vociferous lobbyist for that definition because he signed a petition a year and a half ago. Um, she left out the fact that I was not the only one who wrote that story. She left out the fact that the story had nothing to do whatsoever with Jews or Israel or the IHRA definition of anti-Semitism. Lucinda is a recent graduate of Glasgow University, where she was president of the Jewish Society. She worries about the university's lack of care for their Jewish students and was the victim of hate speech. In first year, I became aware about the lack of a Jewish presence on campus outside of the Jewish Society. So no kosher food available. Uh, the university made no acknowledgement of any Jewish holiday until my third year at uni, after we pushed them strongly to do so. And even then that was met with kickback that they didn't want to because it was a political act. In the last year, the high point would have been during um, the Israel-Palestine conflict where the tensions were highest during May. Um, in that time, I was quite active on social media as the president of the Jewish Society. I also had people from university trying to message me about it and it got to the point where actually someone told me to go and gas myself um, you know, because of purely the fact that I was Jewish and involved with the Jewish society. I decided I didn't want to speak to university because during my time at university, 
I felt that they'd created such an atmosphere of his hostility to Jews um, that it just felt like actually going to speak to them about it was pointless, like that they wouldn't do anything about it. Nina, who is currently the president of the Union of Jewish Students, or UJS, graduated from Bristol University last summer. She was president of Bristol's Jewish Society and forefronted the case to fire Professor David Miller for his inappropriate comments targeting Jewish students. When I was in first year of university, I was president of the Jewish Society in Bristol, and we heard that this lecturer, David Miller, was um, spreading these conspiracy theories in his lecture. So as the elected representative of the Jewish students, I decided to complain on behalf of them. And I put in a formal complaint to the university, which they judged by their own definition of anti-Semitism because they said the IHRA definition, which is the accepted one in most of the UK, was too controversial. So they used their own definition, found that he wasn't anti-Semitic at all, and basically dismissed everything that I had said, which was quite disheartening. I'd put a lot of work into this complaint. So I then escalated the complaint to a higher level within the university. And again, it was found that he wasn't anti-Semitic. So my complaint went absolutely nowhere. The gist of what, what she was saying in that thread are um, there have been editorial changes at the paper. There is this news editor who vociferously lobbies for the trade definition of anti-Semitism. He is the one who conducted this fake report against me. And then she went, I remember this very, very clearly. She went and, and hey, presto, I've, I've been in their sights for a long time. That's what she said. I remember those words. When the article was run, I received an email pretty much, you know, a couple of hours after I'd even seen that it had been released, just stating that sort of they were there if I needed to speak to someone. And then that was it. They didn't want to know who had said it, when it happened, any further details. No, they did not, you know, promise any action on it or investigation. It was just simply, if you need us, you can talk to us. And at the time, OK, that seemed like a nice gesture. But I think as I reflected on it, that felt really performative. And actually, if I had gone to speak to them about it, they just wouldn't have done anything about it anyway. I also spoke to Baroness Steech, who initiated the debate on campus anti-Semitism in the House of Lords. In all the um, efforts against racism, anti-Semitism seems to have been forgotten. And I think the problem is that universities don't have proper mechanisms to deal speedily with anti-Semitic incidents on campus. All universities have disciplinary procedures, but I think within those procedures, they need to have something specialised to deal with anti-Semitism. He basically created this whole conspiracy theory that he taught in his lecture, where he linked all the Jewish communal organisations in the UK together and put them under the influence of Israel, which basically was saying that they're linked in this conspiracy and they're under the pay or the influence of Israel, which is an anti-Semitic trope. Um, later, it got a bit more serious. He started attacking me and other Jewish students personally and saying that we were part of this bigger ploy under the state of Israel to get him fired or to have influence in the UK. He said that um, the only ones that feel unsafe are part of a political tendency and it's propaganda and part of a bigger ploy with the Zionist movement allied to the Israeli government. So he basically completely invalidated everyone's feelings of feeling unsafe and attacked. Conflicts of interest which absolutely tarnish the paper's integrity. A great shame. I mean, that, that tweet, that, is, that says it all in that tweet. It's damaging the paper's integrity to have student journalists who have conflicts of interest in the editorial lineup. When I took over as president of the Jew Jewish Society, things sort of, tensions were a lot higher on campus. So this really peaked when we were alerted to the fact that a senior lead, a lecturer at the university and also a chair on the ethics committee had posted a really anti-Semitic poster on his door for everybody to see. And this was accompanied by other sort of infographics about the state of Israel and how awful they are. And that would be inappropriate in any workplace, but especially as, a, you know, on the ethics community at a university, I had emailed them as well as um, UJS, um, our representative had emailed the university to tell them about this poster. We went after a couple of days to check that the university had removed it and no one had. 
Like we had to take these posters down and actively take them to security. He did this whole thread linking me as the JSOC president to UJS, the organisation I now work for, linking that to the World Zionist organisation and then linking that to Israel. So he was basically saying I was three degrees of separation from the head of the Israeli state, making it seem like I had all this undue power and influence when in reality I was an 18 year old student just trying to get my degree. When I started speaking out about it on social media and in the press, I got a lot of hate comments on Twitter. You're a drama queen. Um, another snowflake joining the witch hunt. How do you sleep at night? The Israeli lobby must be proud of you. You are a propagandist and what you are doing is propaganda. Stop weaponizing anti-Semitism. And someone also said, this is also extremely bad acting. As the Jewish Society, we obviously continued to push this issue. Um, we sent multiple emails to the university alerting this with UJS backing, showing them the image. You know, it took months and it actually just culminated in them saying, well, we met with him and we spoke to him about it and he understood that that wasn't okay, which to us, none of that was satisfactory at all. She's like a tenured professor at, came, at a Cambridge college with 80,000 followers. She supervises people, she lectures, she's very involved in what's going on at the university and she does this, it's, it's not the nicest thing to, to wake up to. It was only two years later in 2021 that the university began to take it seriously. They launched an investigation and eventually he was fired um, when I was in my third year. But the only reason he was fired um, was because he directly attacked me and other students. He wasn't fired because of any anti-Semitism. He was fired because of code of conduct and inappropriate behaviour towards students. So. It was a conclusion, but it wasn't a satisfactory conclusion, I would say. This is the statement from Bristol University on 1st of October 2021, when David Miller was um, fired. It says, A disciplinary hearing found Professor Miller did not meet the standards of behaviour we expect from our staff, and the university has concluded that Professor Miller's employment should be terminated with immediate effect. They basically say that nothing he did was anti-Semitic, it was just... Um, unacceptable in terms of his standards of behaviour. This heightened with the same lecturer around the time of the David Miller incidences at Bristol, um, where this lecturer came out in support of Miller. And then when questioned that by, just so happened another Jewish student who hadn't identified herself as Jewish to him at all, but purely based on her surname, he tweeted on his personal Twitter, which was public, saying that a member of the lobby had contacted him for comment and been that referring to the Jewish lobby. Once again, that got sent to the university. It took months and months and months for them to do anything about this. This would have been, you know, April, May time. In October, there was still not a resolution on that and the university was still investigating, um, which is disgusting. You know, it was just such a blatant disregard for their Jewish students. What was really troubling about what she said is this dual loyalty idea, which is Jews can never be loyal to the thing they claim to represent, but they are always loyal to their own people and their own causes. And because of that dual loyalty, I can't do my position. I, I, I can't fill my position effectively and I need to be removed essentially because of that dual loyalty. I would say that university aren't doing enough. And the reason for that is that the sort of complaints surrounding that lecturer, the university is still dragging out any action on that. He still works for the university, even though, you know, I think in any other professional workplace that wouldn't be accepted. Um, you know, there's still no kosher food on campus four years since we originally asked for that. Um, the university barely acknowledges any Jewish holidays, all those kind of things. And I would say that really, if you're a Jewish student on campus, it's quite a challenging one where you feel the university is sort of being quite performative and just not really caring that much about their Jewish students. I wouldn't blame Jewish students who carefully research when they're choosing universities, a university that has plenty of Jewish students and where they will feel safe. It shouldn't have to be like that. 
not at all. A Jewish student should feel free to pursue any course that they feel is the one they want. I think it's really symptomatic of this larger problem that we have in society about free speech versus hate speech. So uh, David Miller's argument the whole time has been that what he said was very legitimate within free speech. He's just criticising the Israeli government. But my position and the position of the Jewish students and the Jewish community is that what he was saying does amount to hate speech. It amounts to harassment. He was going beyond the line of genuine criticism of Israel and was starting to attack Jewish people, Jewish institutions, which was unacceptable. But the university only recognised that when it affected Jewish students directly. So it took them a few years to get there. After speaking with these students, it became obvious to me that much more work needs to be done to combat campus anti-Semitism in the UK. Adopting the IHRA definition may be a good start. However, rising incidents are not to be taken lightly. Universities must listen to and protect their Jewish students and they need to do it now.